all together. Here, here. Today, a new photography studio opens in Columbus, Ohio. The studio is named for a pioneer in the industry, a man whose talent in photography is legendary. His name is Tony Salento. Over the past five plus decades, he has taken thousands of portraits and has encountered and conquered nearly every photographic situation possible. His pathway to success has been interesting. And one of Salento's early mentors may surprise you a bit. You know, having the experience at the beginning uh, of my career working for the Green Bay Packer organization and being influenced by, you know, by an individual by the name of Vince Lombardi, of having the feeling of not being complacent. Yes, the young Salento became the official film documenter photographer for the Green Bay Packers during the Vince Lombardi-led glory years of the 1960s. I guess at the age of 22 years old, you know, watching, watching a, a tremendous influence I wanted to be the best photographer in the world. And during the next five decades, Salento definitely reached for that goal. First operating his own studio in Milwaukee, Wisconsin during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, then spending the past 20 plus years overseeing all photography at LifeTouch, the world's largest portrait company. His subjects have included popes, presidents, and celebrities. And finally, in 2011, at the age of 73, Tony Salento decided to move on to the next chapter of his life. And I can tell all of you that are sitting in this audience that I love you deep in my heart. God bless. Salento had no intention of putting down the camera and fading into the sunset. No, there was the big dream. The big dream left on his bucket list. You know, it's always been a it's always been a dream of mine for many, many, many years to you know to come to a country that uh, uh, had a, just a tremendous amount of culture. Joining Tony on this trip to the Serengeti was longtime friend Bob Peterman, a fellow award-winning photographer and Life to the Max documenter Jeremy McComb. It would be 10 days in the country of Tanzania, armed only with cameras and curiosity. Serengeti is more famous because of immigration of wildebeest, which they are immigrating in a huge group, which can be like uh, more than 5,000. And uh, the number of wildebeest which are immigrating, they are more than 2 million, 2 million point five wildebeest. We got up every morning at about 3.30, and we were on the, the actual hunt, but we hunted with cameras rather than with, um, with guns. And, and we were, you know, three to four feet away from lions and cubs and big tigers and elephants and uh, giraffes. Itself is uh, uh, very, very graceful, very peaceful, uh, very tranquil, but extremely powerful all at one particular period of time. And and we uh, here uh, witnessed, you know, you know, not only the male lion but the female lion, the cubs, the playfulness that they have. Uh, they just seem to have a, a, a wonderful peace about them, even though the strength and the dynamicness of them was was just unbelievable and. Uh, very, very transmittive, you know, to the point of, 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 of that you could feel what they were thinking, almost. You know, we witnessed something that I, 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 I wished that we could have seen, but when I saw it, it, it wasn't that of the most pleasant, and that was a killing of, the, uh, of a Willoughby, but, but how nature takes it, its place. I mean, everybody's got to eat, and, and, and you know, there's hundreds of thousands. We saw hundreds of thousands of these willoughbys as, as they moved toward the river. I 
Our guide, Ayubu, uh, has been spectacular. Without him, we would have we would have been lost in the shrubs. But he he led us to every animal that we wanted to see. He knew right where to go. He he took that vehicle through spots that I just thought is not a good idea. But all in all, I think it, it all comes down to your guide, and we had the best guide here out in the in the bush. When you see it firsthand, it's as almost though you are stepping back a thousand years. And that's how far back some of these tribes go, and that's how far back some of the traditions go. And to be able to meet these people one-on-one, -on -one, shake their hand, say hello to them in their native tongue, and I know coming back, I'm going to be a different person. The, the, the peace and the tranquility and the happiness that they had was just, was just absolutely unbelievable. In fact, the, the people in Africa, uh, I would have to say, uh, and I've been in many, many places in this world, but the people in Africa just seem to be just so beautiful. These 10 days have probably flashed by faster than uh, a, a flash on a camera. And it, it, nothing was repetitive, even though we went out into the fields, even though we had, you know, wonderful uh, greetings by, you know, by, you know, the, you know, the African people. Uh, it, it just seemed to have uh, created something new each and every day. There was something that was, that was extremely spiritual and, and, and very godly to this, to this whole experience that I've had here. A trip like this was a life-changing experience for a man who thought he had seen it all through his viewfinder. And even in the autumn years, Tony Salerno realizes that life still has in store many opportunities to look through his camera and be inspired by the wonders of it all. That's why we say, like, the Tasa, our motto is, you come as a visitor, you live as a friend.